I'm so pleased to have you here. We've got Thank so you. much to talk about. I mean, Bridget and Doctor Who, movies, this new <laughs> comedy. If we were to kind of take you back six years, uh, did you ever think life could be like this? You've got millions of fans all around the world, including the Kardashians. It's wild. It's really crazy. That and Martin Scorsese was a crazy one. He's a Dairy Girls fan. Wow. Who would have thought? I know. <laughs> Also, like that you can understand the dairy accent. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah. Um, How do you find that out? Uh, he talked about it on a panel. I think he's a big fan of Siobhan McSweeney, Sister Michael herself. Who isn't? Who isn't? Yeah. It's a good taste. She's a BAFTA winner. <laughs> yeah. That's unbelievable. That the names yeah, you could chuck around crazy. for that show is incredible. Uh, let's talk big mood, shall we? Yes. Um, so it's about your character Maggie and her best friend Eddie. How would you like describe their friendship? As you can see, it's. It's a funny one. Yeah, so they've been best friends for like 10 years. They're on the verge of turning 30 and sort of realise the things that were cute and fun in your 20s are maybe not as cute and fun <laughs> in your 30s. And they're sort of reaching that time where, you know, do you move on and get married? Where are you with your career? And the mistakes get a little more serious as time goes on. Um, but they truly love each other, maybe too much. It's a little codependent. And my character Maggie also has bipolar disorder, which is something that then starts to really trickle in throughout the series and really affect her life. Yeah. It's interesting this, and that, like you say, that time of life in your thirties, it's mm -hmm. so complex and you often explore that in the stories you tell, the complexities of female friendship. Yeah. Very much the case for Maggie and Eddie. Uh, yeah. What do you think people will relate to about their relationship? I think it's, it, it's really relatable because it's such a difficult thing when all of a sudden one day you wake up and you have to be a grown up and you're like, I'm not sure that I'm equipped for that. And you know, being 30 can mean a lot of different things. My friends back home are married with kids and then my friends in London are, you know, having crazy all nighters and going to festivals. So it's like, all of those things are legitimate. And there's a line about that in the show, but it's not suitable for the one show, but you'll have to watch to see what it is. Yeah. It's funny, I just realised I can't say that on this show, yeah. yeah. People can watch and find out, Absolutely. can't they? Um, we've had plenty of questions uh, in Phoenix. Oh, amazing. Uh, and we've got one here from Brooke, and she has asked, uh, well, she's actually asking and saying as well, uh, well, thank you for portraying um, a character with bipolar disorder, because there's not a lot of that on TV. Mm -hmm. But also asking, how did you prepare to play her? So the script was written by one of my best friends in the world, Camilla Whitehill. We met at drama school in 2008, which is longer ago wow. than I would like to admit. And she's incredible. Yeah, there we are at drama school. Aww. We thought we were so chic. That was our, <laughs> that was our um, drama school ball at Birmingham. Um, yeah, but it was just a brilliant, brilliant script. And it's a, it's a comedy, first and foremost, that deals with dark subjects, but you know, Maggie's a fully rounded human being. She happens to have bipolar disorder. And I think that was a really important thing that Camilla wanted to convey that, you know, just because someone has a serious mental illness, it doesn't negate their personality. Mm. It's still, you know, it's, it's hard to play someone that's mm. terribly depressed, that's also very funny, but when you have a brilliant script, it makes that. Yeah. Very doable. And that's what makes it real, because mm -hmm. people are, as you say, who they are uh, throughout all of that. Um, Nat has asked here, did playing Maggie change your view on mental health? And is there a takeaway message you have for anyone watching? It really did, to be honest, because I think, unfortunately, anxiety, depression are very relatable and very commonplace in society. And there's a real mental health crisis in this country, back home in Ireland, all over the world, really. So we've beco it's become a comfortable thing to talk about those kind of things. But then bipolar disorder is very complex. And, you know, learning about mania and imagining how insanely difficult it must be to go from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows and talking about, you know, psychosis and antipsychotic drugs and all of that, it's it's deeply complex and it's uncomfortable and I think the show is not afraid to go to those uncomfortable places yeah. while still being funny. It is a comedy. That's good though. Yeah. It is and it does both brilliantly. Thank but you. listen, I have to ask about Bridget because yeah, fans are waiting so anxiously yeah, for the next series. It's coming in May. Mm -hmm. So Penelope was at a bit of a low point oh, yeah. last time we saw her. Best She's always friend, having a terrible time. Best friend <laughs> abandoning her, you know, overhearing her crush saying he wouldn't court I know, her. Please, I know. please tell us it's going to get better. It's all changed. It's funny because when I think of people only seeing season two, you know, having filmed, it's eight months filming for a season. It's changes so much. It's a very action-packed season. I got to see some last night. We just flown back from Amsterdam doing some press for it there. It's great doing press for two shows. You're not tired at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I got to see some last